it's Tybug and welcome back to my channel. So last week we did an appetizer for Thanksgiving and this week we're going to do the main course. So my family are very avid salmon eaters. Usually for Thanksgiving we have um, crab because like that's our holiday food, but salmon is such a staple in my household that I figured I should do like a little variation of that for Thanksgiving. So the recipe I found is once again off Pinterest and it's by Killing Thyme, like the herb thyme. And it is pan seared salmon with apple cranberry sauce, which sounds really good. It's a it sounds a little bit sweet, but that's okay because you'll have a whole bunch of other stuff this on Thanksgiving to like kind of even that out. So I'm not really going to pan sear it because I feel like that's going to be a lot of work right now, but I'm just going to cook the salmon how I usually do. This time I'm going to be going off the recipe a little bit because I have my own way of making salmon. So I'm really just going to be following the recipe for how to do the cranberry sauce. And I'm so glad I have to cook here because this always gives me a great angle. Just enjoy my kitchen. Okay, so the first thing is I have two seven ounces of salmon. It's just the um, salmon we get here in Hawaii. And I'm going to go rinse that off, pat it off, and then I'm going to prepare it to go into the oven. But that's not what we're going to be doing first because we're going to be doing all of the sauce stuff, let it simmer while the salmon is cooking. So I'm going to go get that salmon now. So when I say, oh, if you see my shorts, these are pajama shorts, by the way. I just wanted to get half dressed. So when I say salmon is like a staple in my family's diet, I legitimately mean it's a staple. We eat it like three out of the seven days of the week. And we're going to leave the skin on the salmon because it's going to be a lot easier to take off once it's cooked. And then you're just going to put that in the pan. So for the salmon, I'm going to coat the bottom with some avocado oil spray. I got this from Costco and they came in a pack of two. And you just want to lightly coat it so it doesn't get dry and stick to the bottom. Usually I do this before I put the salmon in, but my brain forgot to process that. So we're just going to do it afterwards. And that's not, it's not a big problem. And then I'm just going to shift the salmon so I can get where... And really all you want to do is make sure the bottom is layered. And then you're just going to want to do a little bit of kosher salt on it. Honestly, I don't know what the difference is between kosher salt and the other salt I usually use. So this salt is going to help kick the sweetness of the apple and cranberry. And then I'm just going to set this to the side and let it breathe like what the recipe said. I'm not quite sure what letting the salmon breathe will do. But, let's see how it changes how I usually cook salmon. Okay, next we have a whole bunch of stuff we need to cut up. So I need to, I think I just need one shallot. So I need to thinly slice the shallot and then dice an apple. I use gala apples and then this is just regular shallots. Should I use a serrated knife or a regular knife? I always end up with a knife in my videos. I think just a regular knife is fine. And then thinly slice. I think, should it be vertical or horizontal? <laughs> I don't know. I feel a lot more confident in cooking salmon because I eat it so much. So <laughs> if this turns out spectacularly, we know what my strong points are. Okay, how much butter do they want me to use? One tablespoon of butter. We lack a lot of butter in this household, so we're going to use a little bit more. Usually when I bake salmon, I put a little bit of butter, like I slice the salmon a little bit and put a little bit of butter in it to um, make sure that it stays moist inside. But since we're going to be putting a topping on it, I feel like that's going to be fine. So it will stay moist. So while I'm waiting for that, I should cut my apple. Hi, Meek. <laughs> I 
feel so focused on this video. Because I know what I'm doing. I'm not going into the unknown. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. Slice. This is dangerous, I can know it, I feel it. Now let's put the shallot in the pot. Have it on like medium heat. And we need to let that, what's happening with my English? And we need to let that turn a little bit brown. Oh, and sprinkle with pepper and salt. Let's use our kosher salt. Let's use our pepper. a lot of pepper. <laughs> Ooh, almost sliced my finger on that one. I felt it slide right by. I love the smell of cooking onions, but I hate onions. <laughs> Isn't that odd? I wish I wasn't a picky eater. Like, life would be so much easier if I wasn't a picky eater. I try new foods like all the time, but my taste buds are just like, no, we don't like it. And I'll try it over and over again. And she's like, we still don't like it. Stop doing this to us. And I'm like, please, I just want to eat like a normal person. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat down on that because I don't remember what I had to do next. Then I'm gonna add my, okay, I did my thinly sliced salt. I'm gonna do all my apples into a little bowl I have here. I need to do one tablespoon of squeezed lemon or one half tablespoon of squeezed lemon. I'm just gonna cut this lemon in half and squeeze half of it in there. Cause we want flavor. We want all the flavor. Should I just do a whole lemon? Let's do a whole lemon. We'll get in some sour to combat the salt and the sweet. I mean, I have a utensil that can like get all the lemon out, like and squeeze it into lemon sauce, but that takes work to get out and hands are free. I have lemon seeds in that. I can pick them out pretty easily, but am I going to? I don't know, that's the question. Then I need one third cup apple juice. I'm just using Signature Select, the Safeway apple juice. Uh, 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 uh. Two tablespoons maple syrup. I'm not holding this properly at all, it's gonna slip. One. Two. You know, I've noticed that what, I, I don't like maple syrup, why did I do that? But as I was saying, I've noticed that when I cook like just regularly without filming, the things that turn out the best are things I don't measure. Like when I just go for it, it works. I don't, why is that? Is it just like I need to trust my intuition and my intuition knows what to do? Because it's not like I'm tasting stuff as I'm cooking. I just kind of do it and I'm like, trust the process. Uh, one half tablespoon cinnamon. Trust the process. And then we gotta get some old spice. This smells so good. Need to open this. Oh, it's open. And then I just need to mix that all together. 
and then add it to the saucepan. It's not really a saucepan. Oh, schnapp. I was only supposed to do one eighth ground allspice instead of one half. Oh well, it's gonna be a little all spicy. This smells like apple cider. It smells so good, I just wanna drink it. And then I need cranberries. So these are dried cranberries. They're the ocean spray kind. And how much of that do I need? Two tablespoons. That should be good. I'm going to add that to whatever was in here. Try not to make a mess. We're going to put it on low heat. I'm just mixing up the shallots in there a little bit. And I'm just going to let that simmer. So I'm going to put a lid on it. So for my low heat, I put it on four. Hopefully that's low enough. And it's just going to like soften up. So now for the salmon, I'm going to preheat my oven for 400 degrees. And then once that's preheated, I'll put the salmon in for 15 minutes. And then I'm going to check it to see if it's like moist enough. And then I'll come back to put this on. I, I'm a whiz with salmon recipes. I got it. I got it. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, so it looks like my salmon is done and I've had this simmering for a while. So I'm gonna cut into the thickest part just to make sure it's fully cooked. If it's not, I'll just put it in the oven a little bit longer, but I'm gonna put it in with that on top of it. So it is very moist, which is excellent, but I don't think it's fully done, so I'm gonna put it in for a little bit longer. I'm gonna spoon some of this on there so it can start absorbing some of that flavor. It didn't get as thick as I thought it was going to, which could be my error because I did add a lot more um, juice to it than was suggested. But man oh man does this smell great. But let's Cook this a little bit longer and see how it goes. I'm just gonna put this off the heat for now. That was almost a mistake. <laughs> oh, did I cook this with the lid on? Yeah, I did. I usually don't do that. Okay, I'm gonna take the lid. Oh, I need to open that first. So the liquid is brown, so it kind of looks kind of gross in the pan, if you can see that. <laughs> but that's just what it is. I'm gonna cook it for about five minutes. I think this would probably go best with um, potatoes, like a baked potato, or like, uh, maybe not scalloped potatoes, but like potato would be awesome with this. Here in Hawaii, we usually just eat everything like I mean everything with rice <laughs> so that's probably what we're gonna have it with for dinner and I don't think I add vegetables to it because it has apples and cranberries on it which is like a good fruit you're supposed to have fruit and vegetable with every meal and there's fruit in it so I don't know I don't know I don't know but I'm gonna cook that a little bit longer see if it can like finish up and then I will come back and taste it for you guys and sign off so yeah Easy recipe dish time. Hair flip, hair flip, we got it. Now for the true test. The taste test. Let me get some, if I can get some. Let me get some with apple. It's so good. It's real good. I'm gonna have this more than Thanksgiving. Hi, man. <laughs> that was so hot. 
I'm burning my tongue, but it's so good. So that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope if you're tired of Thanksgiving turkey, you add this to your Thanksgiving spread. It's very good, very easy to make. So yeah, that's all I have. Make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment down below for anything you want to comment about, and I'll see you guys on Thursday. Once again, this recipe is by Killing Thyme. I um, kind of went off a little bit, but it's still their recipe. So yeah, bye, see you on Thursday.